The Blue Jackets escaped New York with one point. They almost had two, but uh, it wasn't to be. And frankly, they didn't deserve the two points. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Jonas Kopsalo. And we're going to talk about Marcus Bjork. All on today's Locked on Blue Jackets. Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, here to bring you news, stories, uh, game recaps, game previews, all of the above and more about your favorite team and mine, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before we get started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen of the day every day. Locked On Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms and also over on YouTube. So uh, if you haven't hit subscribe over there, then uh, feel free to do so. It helps me out, it helps you out. Everybody wins. So, uh, speaking of, of winning, or uh, almost winning, I guess, uh, the Blue Jackets half won a game. Uh, they got an overtime point against the New York Islanders as they fall 4-3. to three. Uh, Honestly, not as bad a game as I thought it was going to be. Um, there were a lot of, of really good uh, things in this game. First of all, Jonas Corposalo continues to be uh, really great, um, which is something that I'm going to have to get used to saying, I guess. Um, start off with with the first goal, the power play goal. Uh, Cole Sillinger's first of the year, uh, or, well, first legal goal of the year. Um, if you remember, he scored that really sick uh, goal in the home opener, or the season opener, excuse me, that turned out to be offside, uh, and hasn't scored since then. But... Uh, there he goes, got his first goal uh, on the power play. Really, uh, really Cole Sillinger-like goal. Um, just really great to see him get on the score sheet finally. Um, assists to Chinikov and Bean. Uh, Bean had a, a really good game, I thought, um, which is, is great because I feel like I've been pretty hard on him the past, well, all season. Um, but I thought I really liked his game. I thought he had a really good game. Um, and like I said, really great to see the power play do something, literally anything. Um, and the Blue Jackets opened the scoring, which they hadn't done in a while. Uh, they opened the scoring against Philadelphia, but before that, they hadn't opened the scoring uh, in the five games previous, I believe. So great to see them open the scoring again. Did they come away with a win? No, but maybe this is a sign that the offense is starting to turn things around. Um, Brock Nelson scores uh, to follow that up. Uh, and then Emil Bemstrom gets his first of the season. Uh, that was a, a really sick goal, actually. That might be my uh, my goal of the of the game. I've been lax in doing my cannonballs of the game because the team's been lousy. But Emil Bemstrom scores his first of the season. Uh, just a phenomenal pass from Gus Nyquist uh, to make it 2-1. Uh, Emil Bemstrom goes straight up the middle of the ice, backhands the puck in over Ilya Sorokin. Beautiful, beautiful goal. Again, very Bemstrom-like. Uh, hopefully the first of several. Um, unfortunately, because we can't have nice things, uh, Brock Nelson scores again uh, with about 45 seconds left in the period because the Blue Jackets love to allow a goal in the last minute of a period or the first minute of a period sometimes. So uh, it's 2-2 going into the third. And uh, honestly, like I said, this is, this is all going better than expected. Um, and then Marcus Bjork, uh, who was on the ice for both of the Brock Nelson goals. Um, however, I liked his game for the most part. Um, he had a couple of kind of welcome to the NHL moments, I think specifically that second goal, the 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 2-2 goal. Um, and then, you know, he kind of makes up for it with uh, with his first career goal. Uh, first career goal in his debut, um, maybe even on his first shot, frankly, uh, which I do love. Um, but Bemstrom again had a great night. Uh, goal and assist for Bemstrom, two assists for Gus Nyquist. Uh, unfortunately, the Blue Jackets love to allow a tying goal. Uh, Scott Mayfield scores his fourth of the season, makes it 3 3 uh, with about seven minutes left in regulation. And sometimes you just get the feeling that a game is going to overtime. And uh, this one sure is. Um, and the overtime period is something I want to talk about in a little bit more detail, actually, because the Blue Jackets did something super interesting. At, well, not interesting, but they did something that I haven't seen them do in overtime in a long time. Um, and that is play with three forwards. Now, is that because they've got very few 
capable defenseman? Yes. However, I do want to talk about it in a little bit more detail. But first, I've got to tell you about Simply Safe because if you thought about securing your home with home security, but you've been putting it off, you're going to want to listen up because right now, Locked Up Blue Jackets listeners can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for 50% off. This is their biggest offer of the year, and you won't want to miss it. Simply Safe has uh, advanced technology. You can control the system from your phone with the Simply Safe app. They've got crystal clear HD live stream of all of your security cameras. Uh, you can put cameras in every room, every door, every window. Uh, you can put them outside. Uh, they've got super high tech sensors, so they know if it's an actual break in or if it's just like a fox wandering around. Uh, they've got twenty four seven monitoring agents. They've got tech support staff that are always there for you and it was named the best home security system of 2022 by us news and world report for the third year in the row in an emergency 24 7 professional monitoring agents use fast protect technology exclusively from simply safe to capture critical evidence and to verify the threat is real so you can get priority police response don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system that this show recommends. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. This is their biggest discount of the year, so don't wait. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. There's no safe like Simply Safe. So I want to talk a little bit about the overtime decision um, because honestly, I didn't hate it as a decision. Um, so the Blue Jackets sent out the top line. Um, they sent out Goudreau, Jenner, and Line A. Um, and honestly, it started pretty well. I believe Jenner won the face-off. Uh, they went straight into the Islander zone. And uh, they were there for basically all of however long overtime lasted, um, right up until the Islanders got a break the other way. Zach Prize puts it in the net on uh, a really nice pass from JG Peugeot. And uh, that's, uh, that's game. But... I thought it was a really interesting strategy because when you look at the defense call that the Bucek have at the minute, they don't really have, you know, a Warensky. Right? Well, they don't have Warensky right now. Um, who's, you know, their best puck moving defenseman. Nick Blankenberg is a really good puck moving defenseman. Like arguably Jake Bean is their puck moving defenseman at the minute. Um, but I get why they didn't start with that. The that top line, I think, is a really interesting way to do overtime. I would have been really interested to see how it had gone had they played longer than uh, 39 seconds. So a really an unfortunate way to lose, but the Blue Jackets got a point. They didn't deserve a point. Um, they got brutally outshot, uh, 46 to 29. Um, 42 of 46 saves for Jonas Corposalo, who continues to impress. Um, they got beaten on face-offs. Uh, the power play was a success. Uh, the penalty kill continues to be strong. Um, I think the Blue Jackets have probably moved up in the standings. For the uh, the penalty kill, they were currently they were sitting on about 18th. They're now 14th in the league at exactly 80%. Uh, the power play, I assume, is still dead last in the league. Yep, 8.1%. But good news, the Ducks are also under uh, double digits. So maybe the Blue Jackets can catch them in the next game. Um, overall, I thought, considering it's Vladislav Gavrikov and then like just a bunch of children... Uh, I didn't hate the game. I thought, like I said, there was a lot of good points in it. Um, it was better than expected, which honestly, I think at this point, you know, you're down three of your top six defensemen, uh, arguably four of your top six, top six defensemen. Um, getting an overtime point against a division rival is about as good as it's going to get. And um, the Islanders, I thought, played a, played a very good game. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm not upset. I'm disappointed that they couldn't close out the the win, but it happens. Um, the Islanders are ten and six now, so versus the Blue Jackets, uh, four nine and one. Could be worse. It could be a lot worse. Um, I'll be interested to see how the Blue Jackets respond to that. Uh, because they've got uh, another game against Philadelphia coming up. Uh, they just played Philadelphia like three days ago, but they're playing them again tomorrow night. Uh, so we'll talk about, a little bit about that tomorrow. Uh, I want to um, talk a little bit about the defense a little bit more, though, um, because, again, I keep saying, oh, yeah, no, I, I thought it was... 
I thought it was good. Um, something interesting about the defense, uh, to me anyway, is uh, how much the play the guys played. Uh, the the ice time. I was making a joke about how Vladislav Gavrikov was probably going to hit you know twenty seven minutes of ice, but Andrew Peak played twenty minutes and thirty three seconds. Gavrikov played twenty two fifty. Um, Bean played twenty one ten. Christensen played eighteen oh seven. Bjork played 15.01, and I'm missing a defenseman somewhere. Um, oh, Beirut played 18.50 as well. So just uh, really balanced, surprisingly balanced. Um, I believe Bjork had the lowest at 15.01, um, but that's still, I mean, that's still almost a full period. So interesting to see them play kind of by committee as opposed to... Um, just riding Vladislav Gavrikov and Andrew Peak all game because uh, I did suspect that was what was going to happen. Is they were basically going to play uh, Peak and Gavrikov and then uh, Bean and Christensen, or um, yeah, that's what it was. It was Bean and Christensen, and then Beirut and Bjork would maybe get the odd shift. But for better or worse, it seems like you know Beirut and, and Bjork got uh, got a decent amount of of ice time, which is great. Um, and obviously, you know. Uh, Bjork was a, uh, he was dead even on the night, um, so he must have been, so he was on the ice for his goal, and he must have been on the ice for at least one of the goal, because uh, I know he was on the ice for two of the uh, Islanders' goals. So, yeah, just a really, a really quietly solid debut for Bjork, I think. Getting that goal, uh, two shots on goal, four hits, uh, one blocked shot, 15 minutes of ice time. I, I don't have any problems with, with that. Um, I think the the two Islanders goals that he was on the ice for, one of them was very much a, oh, there's nothing he can do about that. And the other one was, like I said, it was kind of a welcome to the and welcome to the NHL moment. You know, he's going to do things like that. He's going to make mistakes. But I, uh, I was pretty happy with Bjork's performance. I'm interested to see how he plays uh, in tomorrow's game, considering, you know, everything. But uh, that is uh, that's going to be a, a conversation for tomorrow's episode. Uh, in a minute, we've got some mailbag questions, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna answer those. We're gonna see what the people want. But first, I've got to tell you about Bet Online because it's your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball, soccer, uh, esports. They've got it all at betonline.net. They've got hockey as well. So if you were to put some money on, uh, I don't know, Marcus Bjork turning it around and winning the Calder, you could do that at betonline.net. If you love sport podcasts, which I'm guessing you do, you listen to Locked on Blue Jackets, you can find those at BetOnline as well. They are the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. So head to the website today, that's betonline.net, on your laptop or mobile device to learn more, because BetOnline is where the game starts. Thank you once again for making Locked on Blue Jackets your first listen of the day. Now make sure you make your second listen of the day, Locked on Sports Today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go on the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked on can provide. Locked on Sports Today is available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Now let's uh, let's do a mailbag because uh, I got a couple of really good questions. Um, one is positive and what is not so positive um so we'll start with the, the the bad one and then we'll move on to the the better one uh we've extensively covered how no one knows what could be done to fix the current situation what are some things you want them to do to not do to address things so i thought about this um and i think the number one thing right now is i don't want them to overreact to all of the injuries um, at a certain point, it may be that they have to make a trade to try and acquire a body, literally anybody. Um, however, I think other teams will know that the Blue Jackets are kind of struggling right now in terms of they literally need any NHL defenseman. And it's going to be very similar to kind of the Arthur Bjorkstrand trade, I think, where they got, what, a second and a third round pick for... A potential, you know, thirty to forty goal scorer in in off Bjorkstrand. So, Yamo, I think knows this. I don't think he is going to go out and make a trade. Um, for the most part, I like Yamo's decisions so far. Um, I don't necessarily agree with most of them, but I can see where he's coming from in making them. 
Um, I don't think he's going to overreact to this. And I think the game against New York was a really good indication of where the Blue Jackets are right now in terms of defense in the, you know, are they perfect? No. Are they going to make more mistakes? Probably, yes. But it's not a um, smash glass, hit panic button, run around screaming type situation. Like if the Blue Jackets had been absolutely curb stomped, you know, if it had been another... 7-1 7-1 loss or whatever um and they got outshot you know 25 to 3 then maybe maybe that is a big a bit of a bigger problem but right now um i think the biggest thing i want them not to do is go out and get another defenseman specifically um i don't think they need to necessarily um if someone else gets hurt i'm just going to knock on wood real quick um then potentially that's an option but right now i think i would rather keep the prospects and the picks that we have instead of going out and getting another defenseman do we have a lot of cap space to play with yes however next year we will not um i could see them going out and grabbing you know someone on an expiring contract maybe um i don't have any of those uh, names to to hand but um the problem is that the blue jackets you know if if once Borenski comes back next season, uh, if Blankenberg comes back, if Boquist comes back, like things are going to get better in a, probably about a month. A month to six weeks, I think, for the Blue Jackets is when it's going to start picking up in terms of guys are going to get healthy again. It looks like Erica Branson might be playing tomorrow night, um, which is a, a good, new, good news, if only because he is an NHL defenseman um, and not playing his the second to tenth NHL game. But... Um, yeah, I can't I can't see Kekalainen and overreacting. And that's I think the biggest thing is I don't want them to panic and be like, well, we haven't got a defenseman, we need to go out and get a defenseman, and then overpaying for a defenseman that's gonna be on the books for the next four, five, six years. Um, they don't need that. They just need something to kind of get them through the next month, month and a half. And if Christensen, Beirut and Bjork, potentially Eurocheck is an option, if they can do that, then I think it's gonna be uh not plain sailing, but I think it's probably going to be a little bit smoother than people expected it to. Um, I mean, we'll see how the play tomorrow night. Uh, I suspect it'll be mostly the same lineup. Uh, maybe uh, someone coming out for Bre- uh, Branson. It looks like Sean Corelli might be back in the lineup as well. So that's good news. Um, hopefully Kent Johnson makes it back into the lineup. I didn't even talk about how he's been missing it for a couple of games, but... Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think they're going to react. I think the best thing that they can do right now is to not do anything, um, which kind of follows into my next question, which is uh, what good things have you noticed in the past few games? Um, we talked a little bit on Friday's episode about the goaltending um, and how good Jonas Corpusalo has been, um, and the answer is very. Uh, he was very good again. Uh, Saturday night against the Islanders, I wouldn't be surprised to see him start against Philadelphia again tomorrow. Um, so that's a really good thing. Is I think Kopsalo has really struggled the past few seasons. Um, it's really good to see him getting his his game back on, getting back into things. Um, it does worry me a little bit that we haven't seen Elvis since the first uh, Finland game, but he'll be back Um and I think this might be the best thing for him right now is sit, reset, recover, and then um, the next, I don't know what the Blue Jackets schedule is like for the next couple of weeks, but there's definitely some games that they could uh, put Elvis in. Like maybe they put him in against Montreal, for example, who I think, I believe they play on Thursday. Um, you know, so a team like that, that is playing better than expected, but could be a good game to get Elvis's confidence back up. Um so we'll uh, we'll see. That's that's my one good thing is uh, is Corpusalo. Um, the other thing is uh, the other thing is Johnny Gaudreau had three points against Philadelphia. He didn't have any points against New York, but he looked really, really good. Um, and he's looked really good in every game. I think. Um, he's been probably the best forward, uh, even if he's not scoring. Uh, he's currently on I think twelve points in fourteen games, which is pretty good. So again, that's a that's a really great. A really great sign. Um, and as I record, as I'm about to, to wrap up recording, uh, this is not a mailbag question. Uh, it is an injury update. Blue Jackets forward Patrick Line suffered a sprained ankle against the Islanders and is expected to miss three to four weeks. So I guess there goes 
there goes that. Uh, out three to four weeks. So Crowley, I assume, will come back in and they'll shuffle some of the lines around, but uh, not not what you want to hear, especially, you know, he just missed a bunch of time with that elbow injury. Now he's sprained his ankle. He's going to be out for a month. Man, these t- this team just cannot get a break. Um, and I guess we'll talk about that in tomorrow's episode because I am uh, about out of time here. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day every day. Lots of Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms and also over on YouTube. Tomorrow we will be taking another look at the Philadelphia Flyers, how they've been doing since the last time Blue Jackets played them like four days ago, uh, what the Patrick Lyon injury means for the lineup, and uh, if there's been any other lineup news. So that's coming up on today's episode, uh, on tomorrow's episode, excuse me. I've been Jay Foster. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J K O B F O R S T E R. You can find this podcast at LO underscore Blue Jackets. If you have comments, questions, criticisms, you can email me at lockedonbluejackets at gmail.com. And uh, thank you once again for listening and for making it your first listen. I super, super, super appreciate it. Until tomorrow, make sure you stay locked on.